Meet Rayoma. He's a 39-year-old dude who had the misfortune of getting hired in a black company that worked him to the bone and exploited him day in and day out. One day, while sleeping in his bed, he fell on the ground and hit his head causing several blood vessels to pop inside his brain and well he died from brain hemorrhage. Being a huge jack dude, his only regret was that he died in such a miserable way even though he trained his head like a rock by tolerating all the beating his parents gave him since childhood and even his boss who broke a bottle on his head. As you can see, dude had lost all his hopes and dreams long long ago after living such a harsh life. After his death, he meets up with three gods, namely, Gain the Creator, Lulusha, the Goddess of Love, and Kufo, the God of Life. They tell him that they will be reincarnating him into an eight-year-old body that they have prepared in another world called Sailfall. They further elaborate that Earth has a lot of magic while their other world is running out of it. So by sending him to Sailfall, they will create a portal for the magical energy to flow from Earth and into Sailfall by using these reincarnation spells. After giving him a thorough explanation with a cover story to tell everyone they make him sign an NDA where he is supposed to keep this reincarnation a secret and not not mention it to anyone under any circumstances. After that, they yeet his soul off into the other world and inside his new young body. From that point on, Ryoma wakes up in the body of an eight-year-old all alone in a forest with a manual and some basic stuff in a bag prepared for him by the gods to get him started in his new life. From the manual, he learns about his beginning stats as well as different kinds of magic and spells. He's blessed with the ability to use all elements but that makes it hard for him to become a master of any. And his base stats for strength are also pretty decent with his mental resistances being the highest. He notes that he certainly kept his strengths from the previous life and then becomes excited about using magic for the first time. For his first experiment, Ryoma tames a slime to test out the taming spell and he becomes really happy with the results. After that, he decides to live in the Ghana forest and research slimes as a hobby. Just like that, for the next three years he lives in the forest gathering more and more slimes of various kinds until there are a thousand of them. They help him around the house with everything from cleaning and healing to crafting and even cleaning his toilet. He gets to spend his life in peace where he gathers materials in the day and occasionally gets to fight some beasts and bandits as well but it's pretty chill for the most part. One day, while traveling through the forest, he sees a party of important looking men calling out to their friend, Hughes, who fell down after getting a bad wound from a beast. One of the companions says that he doesn't have enough magic left to heal him and they worry about getting him back to the town as soon as possible. Just then, Ryoma comes out and tells them that he has some medicine that can help their injured friend. The healer takes the medicine and tests it and then gives it to Hughes easing his pain and putting him to sleep. After that, Ryoma offers them to rest at his home and they all walk to the location with him. On their way, Ryoma tells them that there seems to be a wild beast in the area and it might come back so they should hurry. After that, he takes them to his house which he hides with a barrier magic. The men wonder if he's a hunter and why such a little kid is living in the forest. They put Hughes on bed and let him rest and then wonder just who Ryoma is. Ryoma brings them a box of medicine and tells them to take them with themselves for their friend and then offers them some cold water with ice. The men notice this and ask him if he can use ice magic and then ask his name. Ryoma introduces himself by giving his name and the men's leader introduces himself back as Duke Reinhardt. After that, the rest of the men give their names as well and explain that they were ambushed by bandits on their way. They all fought them off quite easily but then a black bear suddenly attacked them and Hughes got injured and that's when they met Ryoma. After that, Reinhardt asks Ryoma what he is doing there and how he can use multiple magic spells and can even make potions. Ryoma goes with his cover story and explains that his grandparents were former adventurers and they taught it all to him. He then says that they died three years ago and told him to go to a village. But as he's an outsider, no village accepted him and so he has been living there in the forest all alone for the last three years. After that they make Ryoma put his hand on a testing crystal that shows if a person is a criminal or not as well as some basic information about them. Ryoma obliges and then goes to prepare dinner. Meanwhile, the men notice that Ryoma is actually just an 11-year-old kid with high-level pain resistance skills. They wonder just what kind of hard life he has been living up until now and feel sad for him. They decide that they can't just leave him there. Reinhardt says that he will head home and talk to his father and wife and then see what he can do to help Ryoma. With that they all wait for Hughes to recover and then head back to their town. The next day, Reinhardt returns to meet Ryoma alongside his whole family and retainers. They all step forward and introduce themselves. There's Reinhardt's father, Rienbach, his wife and the Duchess, Elise, and his daughter, Elyria. All of them marvel at Ryoma's family of thousands of slimes and Reinhardt asks Ryoma if they have multiplied even more since he last saw them and Ryoma says that they often split up and grow in numbers. Their daughter, Elyria asks how he fits all those in his house and Ryoma says that the slimes have learned how to do that and then goes on to show her. 100 slimes of the same color start combining together and form a big slime that has the skill called Minimize which lets it shrink to the size of a single normal slime. 
Using that skill he can fit all of the slimes in his house with great efficiency. Looking at that, her mother, Elise walks up to Ryoma and asks how he managed to tame a big slime as it has never been done in history. Ryoma reveals that they may look like one entity but in reality they have 100 cores. Taming all 100 at once is impossible but in his case he first tamed them all individually and then had them combine into a big slime. Elise and Reinhardt's father become surprised at this revelation and tell Ryoma that he should register with the Tamer's Guild and present this to them as a scholar. After that, they all go inside and sit down with Ryoma to talk. At first, they give him a clock as a thank you gift for helping them the other day. Then Elyria says that they are a family of tamers and today they are there to help her tame her first familiar. For that, she wants to tame a slime but can't choose which one. She then asks Ryoma about two rare types of slimes in his family that she has never seen before in any books. Ryoma explains that they are called the scavenger slime and the cleaner slime. The scavenger slimes can eat all kinds of garbage while the cleaner slime specifically eats dirt and grime and doesn't harm anything else. Besides that, it can also clear all kinds of odor from the things that it cleans. Elyria notes all this down and then says that she will tame a cleaner slime as her first familiar and asks Ryoma to guide her. Ryoma shows them the place to find lots of cleaner slimes and then tells her to use her bath water as bait to lure cleaner slimes towards her. I'm not sure why a cleaner slime would have a bath water fetish but okay. Even Ryoma feels embarrassed sharing this information but we can all count on the good all hues to break it to everyone in the most direct way possible. With that, they all leave and return by sunset with Elyria successfully taming a cleaner slime of her own. After that, they all join Ryoma for tea in the afternoon and ask him if he has decided what he wants to do from here on out. Ryoma thinks about it a little and replies that he's still not sure as to whether he should stay in the forest or try moving out. He wonders if he would be able to fit in with other people after not having anyone to talk to for three years. Looking at him, Reinhardt's father tells Ryoma that they are going on a trip to the mining town, Gimel and suggests that Ryoma should join them. This way he can experience the world outside and he's always free to come back if he wishes to. At first Ryoma is reluctant in making his choice but then Elyria speaks up and helps him with some words of encouragement. She tells him that this was the first time she went on a journey as well and at first she was scared but at the end it turned out to be a lot of fun and she got to meet Ryoma and even tame her first slime. She tells him that he is bound to experience lots of new exciting things and meet new people if he decides to leave with them and this makes Ryoma reconsider his choice. After hearing all that, Ryoma happily accepts the offer and starts packing his stuff in his dimensional box spell. Hearing that he can use such a spell, the Reinhardt family becomes surprised with his talent yet again, and Elise offers him to ask her about magic anytime he wants. With all his packing done, the next day they all arrive to pick Ryoma up and their butler, Sebas uses his intermediate spell, dimensional home to pull out horses and carriages from inside and that all begin their journey towards Gimel. One day, while on their way, the carriage suddenly stops. Reinhardt goes out to check with his retainers and they find out that there was a landslide due to the heavy rain and it blocked their path completely. As there is fear of bandits attacking them in the area, they decide to work on clearing the path instead of going back and taking the longer route. Ryoma decides to help as well and takes out a special raincoat made from a sticky slime's fiber. The previous duke notes that Ryoma is full of surprises and they had never thought about using the fiber in that way. After that, Ryoma jumps down and goes to Reinhardt and shows them a smart combined magic that allows him to make solid tiles out of the debris blocking the road. After that, he stacks all the tiles up using his slimes and they clear the road pretty quickly. Everyone commends Ryoma for his smart and innovative approach towards using magic and then they all continue on their journey. Three days later, they arrive in Gimel and Ryoma notes that this is the first town he ever visited after reincarnating into this world three years ago. He explains that he will be living with the Reinhardt family for the time being and one of the primary goals of this trip was for the Duke to check the mines and see which ones to keep working on and which ones to shut down. After settling in, they all go to the church to get Ryoma his status plate. The status plate acts as an identity card which shows a person's skills and abilities beside their personal information. Ryoma walks inside the appraisal room and places his hand on the crystal ball which calculates his stats and puts it on the plate but suddenly Ryoma sees a bright light and his mind is transferred to the realm of gods. He gets to meet the three gods once again and they tell Ryoma how happy they are to see him enjoy his life. Gain tells him that Ryoma actually accidentally invented the cleaner and scavenger slimes after exposing them to their elements. After that, they tell him about Reinhardt's family's history and reveal that one of their ancestors married a transferee from Earth just like himself and they wanted to become a tamer. They went on to do many great things including the establishment of the Taming School of Magic and the Reinhardt family has had their individual blessings since. They also tell him that their daughter, Elyria has inherited a lot of traits from her ancestors including another transferee from her mother's side who was a typical otaku, 
and reincarnated with a lot of combat ability. They then tell him that the next time he might be able to meet the other gods as well as they have begun to take interest in his new life and with that Ryoma's time with the gods start to run out. After that, Ryoma comes back to his senses and goes out to meet with others. When he walks out, Reinhardt's father tells him that he has exceptional talent for someone his age and to protect him from evil eyes he suggests that Ryoma register with the Tamer's Guild and rise to a high rank to make a standing for himself. Elyria wonders what Ryoma's magic capacity was and he reveals that it was 198,000. Elyria tells him that her capacity was 200,000 and says that even though Ryoma has such a high magic capacity he is able to control his magic pretty well. On the other hand, she can barely use any magic proficiently. Sebas explains that it is one of the side effects of having a high magic capacity that the person can't control their magic very well, but Ryoma has shown exceptional talent in that regard as well. Elyria asks how he learned to control his magic and he explains that he practiced it by playing with magic and he will teach her the next time when they go out to train. After that, they go to the Tamer's Guild and get Ryoma registered but there they find out that the guild measures one's capabilities by the power of the beast they control, and given that Ryoma has only ever tamed slimes, he doesn't have much room to rank up. With that, they all decide to go to the Adventurer's Guild because they rank a person based on their survival skills and capabilities and not their familiars. At the Guild, Ryoma takes the entrance exam and passes it with flying colors. He registers as an archer and accurately shoots down all 5 targets in round 1 with ease. After that he swiftly takes down all 50 moving targets in round 2 with great precision. While all of them celebrate his talent, the instructor throws a knife at Ryoma from behind but Ryoma senses it just in time and tosses it back at him. After that, he summons an earth needle and jumps up to attack the instructor back. But just then the instructor stops him and reveals that it was a small test he does to alert archers as they are vulnerable to such assassination attempts from their blind spots, and then compliments Ryoma saying he is the first one to hit the dull knife back at him and even try to counterattack. After that, he introduces himself as the guildmaster, Worgen, and Ryoma wonders why the guildmaster was taking his test personally. Hearing that, Worgen replies that he doesn't know what his deal is but for some reason the duke and his whole family came to watch his entrance exam, and so he had to do it personally. After that, he registers him into the guild as a G-rank adventurer. He tells him that he could have made him start at E-rank but he was worried about other members seeing it as favoritism, and so he wants Ryoma to rise up the ranks on his own and prove his skills to everyone. Ryoma agrees and then goes down to the job board to pick a G-rank mission. Most of these missions include minor jobs like picking up the trash, cleaning houses, finding lost things, and so on and so forth. Ryoma decides to take the job to clean a house as he can use his slimes to do all the cleaning. The next day, he takes his scavenger and cleaner slimes alongside and goes to the client's house which is next to a garbage dump. He arrives at the client's house and rings the bell and from within comes out a cat girl asking him if he's there to clean the mess up and start hugging him with tears in her eyes saying how she had almost given up all hope of being able to get her house clean once again. She introduces herself as a fellow adventurer by the name of Mia and explains that the land beneath the trash dump beside her house was unstable and one day heaps of trash started breaking through her basement's wall and kept piling up inside. Soon it became so much that no one could manage it and she was left devastated with a basement full of literal garbage. Ryoma decides to start the job with the trash dump itself and uses his scavenger slimes and makes them eat all the garbage in minutes. After that, he repeats the process in her basement to get rid of all the trash and uses his water magic, mist wash to wet the whole room. After that he lets his cleaner slimes do all the cleaning and finally he fills up the hole in the wall by using the same magic he used to clear the landslide debris on their way, create block. He makes bricks out of the debris and then uses the sticky solution from the green slimes to use as concrete. And just like that, he finishes the whole job in a few hours. Mia comes down and wonders how Ryoma managed to do such a good job. She marvels at his fast service and exceptional skills and thanks him a lot before giving him a bonus in his reward for the job. Ryoma returns to the guild and collects his bag of gold and the receptionist notes how Ryoma did an amazing job as no one else would take it because of the sheer volume of trash there was in the house. After that, the guildmaster calls him in his office and compliments him for doing a great job on his first mission. He then tells him about another such mission that needs his exceptional service and starts explaining about the communal toilet problem. He explains that normally this job was assigned to the people in the slums but as the iron mine has been producing less and less ore in recent years, the government decided to make some budget cuts. And the first thing they hit was the community managing costs by cutting the pay of the people in the slums by making a BS excuse that they didn't work hard enough. 
He then says that due to negligence for so long, the pits in the communal toilets are filled up and no one wants to take the job of cleaning them due to the sheer volume of filth and the horrendous smell coming from the pits. Ryoma sympathizes with the situation and agrees to take the job and then says that he will discuss the issue with the Duke and see if he can do anything about the situation. After that, he goes back home and tells Reinhardt and his family about everything. Reinhardt's father notes that there must be some corruption going on and becomes really angry. Elise notes that during his time as the Duke, Rienbach made reforms to the community management department and allocated funds for these tasks to provide working opportunities for the people in the slum. But now they are ruining all his efforts by doing these corruptions. They thank Ryoma for sharing this information and go on to look into the matter. With that, Ryoma takes his slimes and goes to the pits in the communal toilets. There are 30 of them in total, each several meters wide. He notes that it's going to be a long day and prepares his army of turd eaters and perverted cleaners and wears a special waterproof cleaning suit as well to keep himself safe. With that, he leads them straight into the pits and they start. They do their usual routine with the scavenger and cleaner slimes and get the place sparkling. Ryoma also uses his lightning magic to disinfect the place to stop the spread of any disease. After eating so much, the scavenger and cleaner slimes start to evolve and grow stronger. Ryoma notices that they gain miasma resistance which means that the pits were filled with piled up evil magic. I mean it's no wonder right, the place is literally full of nasty stuff. He rushes back to the guild and reports to everyone about the miasma. Everyone is worried for his safety and he feels blessed to have people who care for him and then requests the guildmaster to let him do the job and to see that no one enters the communal toilets until he's done. The next day, the guildmaster assigns a whole bunch of adventurers to guard duty and they let Ryoma take care of all the remaining pits. Ryoma gives his best and works continuously for days on and until midnight eventually finishing the job as soon as he can. After that, he walks back home and then on his way thinks back on his previous life where working till midnight was the norm and he was exploited crazily by his company. He remembers how his mother would always greet him back home but when she died he felt an empty hole forming in his heart that never got filled. Slowly over time, he became less and less sociable and had trouble making new friends and forming any meaningful bonds. Life had started to look grey and he had lost all his hopes. With sad eyes and tired body, he makes it back home and to his surprise the whole Reinhardt family is standing there inside to welcome him back. They ask him if he's fine and take his luggage off and prepare a bath and dinner for him. Being treated like this, he feels extremely blessed for having this life and starts crying as a line hugs him, reminding him of his mother. The next day, Ryoma wakes up to a breakfast made by the young lady. While taking their breakfast, Elyria asks Ryoma for a favor to help her train her magic spells. Ryoma remembers his promise from earlier and agrees to teach her and then he turns to Camel, Sebas, and Elise and asks them to teach him some advanced spells as well. They all happily agree and proceed to finish their breakfast. After that, they all head out to the training grounds and Ryoma helps Elyria practice her fire, ice and water magic with various games such as creating a sparkler firework, making bubbles with her hands and even playing volleyball with them. He also shows her how to add water to the bubbles and use her magic to float them in the air and shapeshift them into various objects. After showing her everything, he lets her practice on her own and goes to Camel to learn some attack spells himself. Camel teaches him various offensive spells like Fire Arrow, Water Shot, Wind Hammer, Rock Bullet, Ice Arrow, Stun Arrow and some defensive spells in those elements as well. After that, Sebas takes up the mantle and teaches Ryoma some complex spells like Dimension Home and Warp and by the end of the day, Ryoma manages to learn all of them. The following day, they go to the mines for inspection as well as for Elyria to get some on-site experience as an adventurer. On their way, Elyria tells Ryoma that after this trip, she will be going to the royal capital to attend school there. Ryoma wonders that she will be gone soon and becomes a little sad and then they reach the mines. They split up into two groups with some retainers and the kids in one group and the other elders in the other. During their inspection, they encounter a huge cave mantis. Hughes explains that they usually live in colonies and multiply rapidly. This means that if they see one, they can expect 30 more to be nearby as well. For this first one, they let Elyria take care of it in a one-on-one -on -one battle and she defeats it by using a couple of ice arrows. After that, Ryoma gets to face a group of four cave mants and he goes on to utterly butcher them like a cool dual knives wielding brawler. He uses physical hardening to enhance his defense and then swiftly cuts off all the bugs. After his fight, they continue to explore the caves and confirm the infestation of the cave mants. With all that done, they decide to call it a day and head back but then Elyria notices a rare metal slime in the distance. She rushes towards it and traps it with a couple of ice walls and then picks it up. She brings it to Ryoma and offers the metallic blob to him as a thank you gift for teaching her how to play and practice with her magic. 
Ryoma forms a contract with the Metal Slime and with that their inspection comes to an end and they go out to meet with the rest of the Reinhardt family. Outside, Reinhardt reports that their mineshaft had a cave bat infestation and he notes it all down to put up a quest in the Adventurer's Guild for them to deal with the monsters in the caves. While standing there Ryoma wonders what his Metal Slime ate and then notices that the dirt beneath them is red in color and wonders if it's full of oxidized iron. He then uses his alchemy magic to extract iron filings from the dirt and then uses the combination and consolidation spells to form them into a shining bar of pure solid iron. Reinhardt's father commends Ryoma for his yet another innovative use of magic, and then remembers that he wanted to introduce him to the owner of the Morgan Trading Company, Serge Morgan. After that, they all go to the Morgan Trading Company and Ryoma shows Serge all his unique products including the waterproof cloth and the iron bar alongside the green slime string. They form a profit-sharing contract where Serge will sell these items for Ryoma and Reinhardt insists that all profits go to him and not to their family. Ryoma feels grateful and thanks everyone for their help and generosity, and they all call it a day. The next day, the guild's grandmaster informs Ryoma and the other adventurers that the corrupt people behind the communal toilet incident were arrested thanks to Duke Reinhardt's efforts and then reveals that their next mission is to rid the mines from the monster infestation and that they will be starting the next morning. The next day, starts his day by conducting some experiments on his metal slime to see its properties. It appears to be resistant to physical attacks, poison and even sticky solutions, but fears acidic solutions. Ryoma notes that it must be because it is vulnerable to acidic corrosion. After that, Ryoma meets up with the other adventurers and they all head for the mines to begin their mission. Outside the mineshaft, the guildmaster forms the teams and explains the kind of monsters they can expect to encounter inside to everyone. Ryoma joins up with a group of rank B adventurers including Jeff, Mia and some other beast folks. On their way, Ryoma reveals that he is now a F rank adventurer after the pit cleaning job and Jeff says that he might rank up to E after the cave beast infestation extermination mission if he does a good job. After that, Mia asks Ryoma about how many slimes he has and he reveals that he has 728 sticky slimes, 323 poison slimes, 211 acid slimes, 3033 scavenger slimes, 11 cleaner slimes, 2 healing slimes, 1 metal slime and 1 ordinary slime making up a total of 4310 slimes in his family. They all commend him for being able to tame so many slimes and then Willana asks him about the kinds of weapons he can use. Ryoma explains that he normally uses a bow and arrows but he can also fight with daggers or unarmed and he also knows some attack spells. Hearing this, Willana asks him if he can support them by focusing on the flying monsters with his attack spells as he's the only one on the team who can do that. Ryoma agrees and just then they run into a group of cave mantises. However, this fight ends as soon as it started as the cave insects are no match for a bunch of B-rank adventurers and a Pokemon trainer with slime fetish. After that, they all decide to move forward and Willana notices a colony of cave bats hanging from the ceiling of the cave up ahead. They all wonder if there is a way to deal with their massive numbers in a short time and Ryoma asks them to let him conduct an experiment. He first covers them all with a soundproof barrier using his magic and then uses the sound bomb spell to knock all the bats down in one go. He then makes his green sticky slimes to unjoin and lets them feast on the massive pile of cave bats. After clearing their cave, they all walk out and notice a big crowd by the mission board. Worgen and his assistant calls for everyone to gather around and reveal that one of their parties encountered a pack of goblins deep in the mines. Based on their info, there is a big goblin village in the center of the mines with at least 500 goblins in it. They plan to station parties of adventurers on all possible escape routes to surround the goblins and then ambush them to annihilate them completely. After that, Ryoma and his group join up with the other adventurers and they all invade the goblin village. Mia and Celia begin the invasion by luring the goblins out and making them chase after them. They lead the dumb monsters into a pool of acid prepared by Ryoma and start culling their numbers down with the help of other adventurers as well. At first they all seem to have the lead but then they find out that the number of goblins is twice as much as they had expected. It looks like a never-ending stream of them and the archers start running out of arrows to shoot. When things start to look bad, Ryoma comes in clutch and shows everyone the power of his army of slimes. He sends the healing slimes off to help with recovering the injured adventurers while his absurd number of scavenger slimes help with collecting arrows and assisting the archers. Meanwhile, he leads off with a swarm of slimes and paralyzes a bunch of goblins with his sound bomb attack and then beats them all down with his earth needles and slimes. Everyone marvels at Ryoma's strength and potential as a one-man army raid boss. They thank him for his help and the mission looks like a success. Oregon notes that 
there must be around 2,000 goblins and that they can all expect a big payout after this mission. But just then, as everyone is celebrating their victory over the goblins, their leader, a goblin commander, emerges from inside the cave alongside a unit of hobgoblins. But Ryoma doesn't give them even a chance to attack and gathers all his slimes and they crash into them like a tsunami wave and defeat all of them. With their mission accomplished, Ryoma asks everyone to gather around and lets his cleaner slimes eat up all the goblin grime off his fellow adventurer's gear. And this surprises everyone as goblin grime is one of the hardest to clean up. Maya notes that Ryoma can make a fortune in the laundry business with his slimes and this idea sticks with him deep inside. After that, they all go out and Lapin tells Ryoma that his healing slimes have evolved and are now able to use high heal as well. Soon, all the other adventurers gather around Ryoma and thank him for his help. Everyone notes that he has made a place for himself in the Adventurer's Guild and they all head back home together. Once back, Ryoma tells the Reinhardt family about everything and then says that he has decided to move out and separate himself from them as he wants to be able to bear his own burden and support himself on his own. They all discuss the idea and Ryoma explains that since their arrival in this town, they have all been really good to him and have helped him in many ways. But as much as he appreciates that, he feels like he's being spoiled and that's why he wants to take a step back and work on building his own worth. They all listen to him and the elders agree to let him leave but only if he promises to accept a few generous conditions. Number 1. He must inform them about his condition daily by writing them letters. Number 2. He must occasionally pay them a visit to show them that he is doing well and finally, he must not hesitate to ask for their help if anything comes up. Ryoma feels blessed to have met such nice people who care for him. Then Illyria refers to him and adds a condition of her own as well. She makes Ryoma promise to meet her after three and six years during her mid-session break and graduation from the Royal Academy. Ryoma makes the promise with her and says that they will meet up and show each other how much they have grown in that time. At last, Elise says that until they are in that town, Ryoma will stay at their inn and this is not up for debate. Ryoma wonders if that can even be considered separating from them and being independent and then asks them how long they will be staying in the town. Rienbach and Elise explain that they will be there until the Grell Frogs outbreak which are hunted for their hide as armor and organs as ingredients for various medicines. But their real target are the Limmer birds that come to hunt them every year, and they would like for Elyria to tame some of them. They also invite Ryoma to come along when the time comes and see if he can tame one as well. After that, Reinhardt asks Ryoma what he meant by separating and living on his own. Ryoma explains that he would like to start off by living as an adventurer in this town and then eventually start a laundry business of his own using his cleaner slimes and advertising them as a way to get rid of goblin grime. They all seem happy with his idea and Rienbach suggests that Ryoma share this idea with Serge. Reinhardt also adds in a request and says that in between his missions and business, when Ryoma gets time it would be great if he can keep an eye on the mines and make sure that the caves don't get infested with some new monsters again. The next day, Ryoma goes to Serge from the Morgan Trading Company alongside Elyria and discusses the idea with him. Serge, being a great merchant, sees the potential in Ryoma's business plan and says that he would like to support him fully. He suggests that Ryoma register with the Merchants Guild and that it will help his business grow a lot with their support. With that, they all ride to the Merchants Guild and Serge introduces him to the old guildmaster, Glicella. Ryoma shows her his cleaner slimes and demonstrates how his business will work and Glicella commends him for his smarts as well. She gets him registered with the guild and then sends him off to see a cheap plot of land on the main road for his shop. They all go to see the place and see a burnt building. Serge reveals that there used to be a bar, an inn and a warehouse here but then a fire broke out and took everything under. Ryoma notes that the location is ideal for his laundry business as it's in the residential area and is close to the Adventurer's Guild as well. Serge helps him prepare all the paperwork and then offers to loan him his own managerial employees and some materials to get started. After acquiring the land, Ryoma starts working on constructing his shop with the help of his slimes and his economy disturbing building magic. He gets rid of the overgrown weed with the help of his scavenger slimes and melts the old building away with his acid slimes. He uses the create block spell to dig up a hole and uses the materials to create bricks and then assembles them with the help of his sticky slimes. And just like that, in a single day, he sets up a two stories high building with a basement as well as a separate dormitory for his employees. After that he has its interior and exterior painted and decorated with tiles with the help of his adventurer friends. And with that, Ryoma opens his first laundry shop in Gimel and names it the Bamboo Forest Laundry Service, which is a play on his last name Take Bayashi which means Bamboo Forest. After the main shop's construction is finished, Elyria notes that the area surrounding the shop looks too empty and lifeless, and suggests that they plant some grass and flowers there. Ryoma agrees and they all get to that. 
While working on that, Elyria asks if Ryoma isn't tired from working so much and he replies that it's nothing compared to his old job and we find out that in his previous life he used to create anime action figures and I'm sure Ludwig would like to talk to him about that. After that he plans to hold an opening ceremony for his shop and discusses the idea with Elyria and Hughes. On their way back, he makes a stop at the church and gets to talk to Kyufo as the other two gods are on vacation on Earth. Kyufo tells Ryoma that his mind is being affected by his young body and that it's totally fine but he should make sure to not overwork like in his previous life. Ryoma takes note of his advice and then goes back home with great ideas in his head for the opening ceremony. The next day, Ryoma goes out with Elyria and the rest of the Reinhardt family to practice new timing spells from Elise. They go to an open hilly area and Elise begins the session by explaining the sensation sharing spell that they would be practicing today. Elise explains that when a tamer forms a contract with a monster, they form a link between themselves that allows them to share their senses including smell, hearing, taste and vision. However, this is not possible with summoning magic as in that case the summoner forcefully forms the contract with the monster so their link is only one way. Elise then says that today they will be using a couple of crew birds to practice this magic and Elyria asks why they won't be using their slimes. Reinhardt explains that with slimes it's hard to share senses because they don't have any sense of sight. After that, they form familiar contracts with the crew birds and start practicing by sharing their senses of sight. It takes them a minute but with Elise's guidance they both grasp the concept and are able to share their senses with the birds successfully. Ryoma notes that it feels somewhat similar to how it feels when you try VR for the first time and then wonders how Elyria is so talented as she managed to do it without any prior similar experiences unlike him. After their practice session Elyria notes that this is the first time Ryoma made a contract with something other than a slime and asks how he was feeling. Ryoma says that it feels pretty normal and she says that it must mean that Ryoma has an aptitude for taming bird-type monsters as well. Ryoma asks what she meant by aptitude and Reinhardt explains that almost all taming magicians have some kind of beasts that they can tame more easily than others. Ryoma says that he must have the aptitude to tame slimes and they confirm it. After that, Rienbach says that finding the right kind of monster to tame is one of the key factors for a tamer to have a successful career. He then reveals that for him it's a small number of scaled beasts that he can tame but each one is really strong. Next Reinhardt reveals that he can tame almost all four-legged beasts, but has no luck with birds, while Elise does well with wolf-type monsters and has over a 100 beasts under her command including more than 20 little Fenrirs. Ryoma starts wondering just how amazing she is but Elise says that Grandpa Reinhardt is even more amazing as he has less than 20 beasts tamed but more than half of them are dragon types. Hearing this Ryoma gets shocked and wonders if he's cheating even more than himself with that kind of talent. Rienbach says that in his case he just got lucky but he can't call them anywhere he wants because it would cause a lot of chaos if a bunch of dragons suddenly showed up in the middle of the town. Ryoma asks what his monsters do when not with him and he explains that they live in the mountains that they own and keep the monsters there under control. Elise says that her wolves live on another mountain and there they guard medicinal herbs from poachers. After calling us poor in 50 different languages and making us appreciate the portability of poke balls, they all call it a day. For the next few days, Ryoma spends his days preparing the waterproof cloth for Surge and practicing his sensation sharing magic with Elyria. After that, he joins his group of adventurers at the guild and they discuss the upcoming Grell Frog outbreak, and music skills to tame a limmer bird alongside Elyria on the day of the Grell Frog outbreak. Everyone decides to prepare for the outbreak to earn lots of money and asks Ryoma about the waterproof clothes he wore during his mission of cleaning the communal toilet pits. He refers them to the Morgan Trading Company and everyone goes to fill surges in Ryoma's pockets by extension. Soon, the day of the outbreak arrives and Ryoma goes to the lake alongside Reinhardt's family. On his way, he meets the peer of Sikkim and they thank him for his tip about the Grell frogs. The drunk guy who insulted Ryoma the other day also steps forward and apologizes to him for his behavior and they all walk off happily. After that, Ryoma rushes back to catch up with the Reinhardt family and sees them all standing by the bank and looking at the family of limmer birds feeding on grell frogs. They stand on the side and Reinhardt points the kids towards a man standing in the distance who's trying to tame the birds as well. The man plays a flute but totally butchers the tune prompting the birds to mock his performance. The man throws the flute in anger and then takes his sword out to attack the birds but they start attacking back with wind magic. The man starts running towards the Reinhardts and falls into the river but Ryoma and Camel use the earth wall spell to protect him. Suddenly, they all start hearing a haunting noise from the crowd of limmer birds but Ryoma seems to be unaffected while everyone else struggles to keep up with the noise. Ryoma uses his magic to find the dark limmer bird and then isolates it from the group with his noise cancellation magic and sends it away. After that, Grandpa Reinhardt explains that it was a nightmare limmer bird that is said to appear once every 10 years and it's amazing how Ryoma managed to locate it and send it away. 
Ryoma notes that he could probably withstand the spell due to his high mental pain resistance and then wonders how they are going to tame the bird now that they have all fled away. The retainers suggest that they return the next day and hope that the birds are back but Elyria says that she will wait here and that she is sure the birds will return today. They all wait at the lake till sunset but no birds come back. Watching this, Elyria tells Ryoma that it seems it's time for their goodbye as she would be going to the Royal Academy the next day. Ryoma feels sad about being separated from her as well and they both have an awkwardly embarrassing moment where Ryoma doesn't know how to comfort her. Hughes tries to tease him saying he should go in for a hug and a kiss but Ryoma beats him down saying he's making the young lady uncomfortable. However, she is just shying away on the side with her face red as a tomato. Just then, the limmer birds come back and Ryoma thinks that they look cautious of him due to their previous interaction. He tells them that he will step away for a while so Elyria can interact with the birds but Elyria refuses to let him being near her be an excuse for her failure and plays her violin anyways. Everyone watches on in silence and enjoys her beautiful music and soon the birds start singing along with her as well. After her performance, a bunch of them fly close to her and she forms a contract with nine limmer birds and manages to catch a shiny Pokemon as well. After that, Ryoma tries his hand on forming a contract with the birds and he pulls out his trusty guitar. He plays the instrument masterfully and makes the birds form a contract with him as well. Everyone wonders what his instrument is called and exclaims how calm and relaxing it sounds. His group includes a rare variant as well, which is the Nightmare Limmer bird from earlier. Subas asks Elyria to cast appraisal magic on her shiny bird and they find out that it is an even rarer breed of Limmer birds called the Phantom Limmer bird that can use light magic instead of dark magic like the Nightmare Limmer bird. And that's how they catch their first bird-type Pokémon and these kids are already older than Ash who's still 10 years old despite traveling the whole world 50 bajillion times and not aging a single day. Later that night, they hold a farewell party for Ryoma as well as to celebrate their taming of the Limmer birds. After the party, Ryoma and Elyria sit together in a room and they say their farewell to each other. Elyria will be leaving the next morning alongside her family while Ryoma will move to the mines to focus on his work and keep an eye on the mines as well. Elyria looks sad and tells Ryoma that she never had anyone whom she could call a friend. Everyone was either afraid of her status or her huge magical capacity. Ryoma wonders why they would be afraid of her magical capacity, and she explains that five years ago she made a mistake. An older boy used to visit their house and he offered to teach her magic but she couldn't handle her magic well at the time and ended up freezing the boy. It didn't become a major incident or anything among families but apparently the boy spread the word that she did it intentionally or that she would attack anyone who crosses her path. And due to these rumors people tend to stay away from her. She then asks Ryoma if he is afraid of her as well now that he knows of her past and he replies that it's fine and such things are bound to happen to everyone once or twice in a lifetime. He says that he isn't afraid of her at all and considers her a close friend. After that, Elyria gives Ryoma a special ruby necklace that she got from her mother on her 10th birthday. She tells Ryom to hold on to it as a lucky charm from her and exchanging gifts among friends means that they will meet again in the future as well. Hearing this, Ryoma accepts the gift and then tries to return the sentiment as well by giving her two of his most precious slimes and tells her that they will come in handy for her life at the school as well. The next day, they all say their farewell to Ryoma and leave for their hometown. Before leaving, Ryoma thanks everyone for being kind to him and helping him in so many ways and then wishes them a safe journey. They all wish him back as well and Elyria reminds him of his promise to meet again in three years. She says that she will study hard and when they meet next she will be much much stronger and more capable with air magic so he should keep up with his training as well. After that, she tells him that they are close friends already so he should call her Elia instead and then leaves with her family. Ryoma sees them off and feels sad for parting ways with them but then cheers himself up by saying that he will work hard and grow his business as well so he can meet them once again one day with his head held high. Meanwhile, the gods look upon him from their realm and note that he will miss the Reinhardt family a lot, and then cheers to his ever bright future. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you never miss a future video. And until next time guys, take care. The next day, he goes on to personally invite everyone he knows. He begins with the Reinhardt family and then goes to Worgen, Glacella, and the other adventurers and invites them all to the opening ceremony of his laundry store. After that, he makes preparations for the feast alongside Elyria and the Reinhardt family's maids. Meanwhile, Serge brings in two twin young managers for Ryoma to hire in his shop. They enter the shop and introduce themselves as Carla and Callum and wonder how an 11-year-old created such a great shop. 
At first they think that Ryoma is a relative of the Reinhardt family and they are really skeptical of a business run by an 11-year-old kid and some slimes. Serge explains that they were working as the sub-manager and the deputy sub-manager at their Luium branch of the trading company. Ryoma welcomes them and asks them to follow him so he can show them the work process of his shop. First of all, they will have the customers buy a sack for their laundry and they can use them as many times as they want. There are different sizes and they charge customers per sack and the prices differ based on their size. After collecting payment and the laundry, they give them a claim check with a unique number assigned to their sack which they will need later on to reclaim their laundry. After receiving the sacks, they are to send it to the back room with the slimes and they will do all the cleaning, ironing and folding. Ryoma takes them in to show all the slimes and then tells them that once the slimes are done, they must collect the laundry and sort it out in proper bags and deliver it to the customers when they come to receive it. Ryoma asks if they have any questions for him and the siblings say that they have none. Ryoma wonders if they are dissatisfied with his work and if they think this work is not good enough for them. After that, Ryoma takes them out to show them the quarters for employees and lets them choose their rooms as they are the only employees living there at the moment. Besides the dorm rooms, there is a break area, restroom and an office kitchen in the shop as well. The siblings simply say yes to all his instructions and have no questions of their own and this makes Ryoma wonder if they are not happy with getting employed there. Soon guests start coming in and Ryoma has the managers help him tend to the guests. The shop is filled with everyone Ryoma met so far from the Reinhardt family to the adventurers and the guild masters of the adventurers and merchants guilds. They all compliment Ryoma's efforts and the food at the event and wish him the best of luck for his business. During the party, Glicella says that she has high hopes for Ryoma's business and the twin managers also note how much and hardworking Ryoma is. After the party is over, Carla and Callum acknowledge Ryoma's skills and talent and formally ask him to let them work there. They explain that at first they were skeptical about this whole business but after spending the day with him and watching how hard he works, they now approve of Ryoma's work ethics and would love to work there with him. Ryoma happily accepts and they get ready to open their business to the customers tomorrow. He also clears up the misunderstanding that he is related to the Reinhardt family and says that he is just a normal adventurer and not a noble and that's why they don't have to be so hard on themselves and should take it easy. The next day, Ryoma opens up the shop alongside Elyria and the twin managers and then leaves for the adventurer's guild as he isn't expecting too many customers on his first day. Elyria meets up with Hughes to go for her magic practice and they split up there. After reaching the guild, Ryoma is greeted by some adventurers who congratulate him for opening his own business. Ryoma asks them how they knew and they tell him that the guild has put up an advertisement plate on the wall for Ryoma's laundry shop and he becomes happy looking at that. After that, he goes on to pick a herb gathering mission so he can check the mines on his way as well. Once he's done with his mission and mine patrolling, he goes back to his shop and finds it crowded with a massive line of people poking out of the shop's door. He quickly wraps inside and asks the managers what was happening and they say that they have been getting a lot of customers and this surprises Ryoma as this is only their first day. The customers tell him that some adventurers told them about the shop and they were eagerly waiting for their opening as they offer good prices and can even clean goblin grime. Ryoma thanks them all for coming and then starts helping around the shop as well and they close the day with good profits. After that, he wonders if he's overworking his employees just like he was exploited in his previous life and asks them if they had any time to rest at all. They say that it was so busy that they couldn't sit down and Ryoma says that he will immediately hire more employees to lessen their burden. He then rushes to the Merchants Guild and discusses the matter with Glicella and asks for her help to hire more people so they can manage everything easily. She congratulates him for his first day being so successful and then says that she will gather the candidates later, and he can select them himself. After that, he returns home to Reinhardt's Inn and tells them about his day. Reinhardt suggests that Ryoma visit the town's guards' headquarters as they are sure to have lots of laundry to do daily and this way he can gain a regular customer. Ryoma thanks him for the suggestion and then sleeps in with a tired but satisfied expression on his face. The next day, business is booming at Ryoma's laundry shop and customers are surprised to see how well he cleans tough stains like the goblin grime at fair prices. After helping out in the morning, Ryoma goes to the merchant's guild to see the guildmaster about recruiting new employees. The old lady gathers a bunch of people in the hall and Ryoma Ryoma introduces himself and his business and asks if anyone would like to work with him. He explains that they need people who can talk to the customers and carry light items like clothing and armor. Besides that, he's a tamer and works alongside his slimes so if anyone has a problem working with them or just with the fact that he is so young then they are free to walk away. Looking at a kid talking about business and with slimes nonetheless, everyone simply walks out except for two people. Ryoma refers to them and says that it would mean they don't mind working with him and they confirm. 
He then asks for them to introduce themselves and the man gets up and shares his name as Fei and introduces his daughter as Lai Ling. Fei says that he would like for Ryoma to hire the both of them and then asks if his broken leg would be a problem for the business, but Ryoma says that it won't be an issue. After that he asks them if they have any requests regarding their payment and they say that as long as they can live they don't have any requests. Just so you know everyone, that's the last thing you want to tell an employer at a job interview. After that, he asks them if they have any requests and Lai Ling asks Ryoma if he knows about any cheap lodging for the both of them to stay as they don't really have much money. Ryoma reveals that they haven't built dormitories for the employees so they can work there carefree. Finally, Ryoma says that they both look really strong and asks them about the weapons they are hiding in their clothes. Fei and Lai Ling become surprised that Ryoma notice the hidden weapons and reveal that they are actually former assassins from another country, but their master lost in a war and with that they lost everything as well so they decided to run away and move here. But on their way, they had to give up all their money to bribe the border guards. At first they started working in the mines to make a living but due to a mishap phase like got injured and he was rendered out of employment. Ryoma notes everything and says that it won't be an issue and says that he trusts them as the guildmaster brought them there. He then hires them both and asks them to work as their bodyguards as well in case of any emergency. After that, they all walk to the shop and the new employees note how beautiful and busy the shop is. They all enter the shop and Ryoma introduces them to the managers. After that, they immediately start helping with the customers. Fei helps at the counter with talking to the customers and collecting laundry while Lai Ling helps by carrying the bags of cleaned laundry. This helps the shop carry through the evening rush and Ryoma asks the managers to calculate their sales for the day. After closing the shop, Ryoma asks Fei and Lai Ling to come with him and he takes them to the break area and heals Fei's leg with his slimes. He says that it's part of his job as the owner to see that his employees are in the best of health. They both thank him for his generosity and then Ryoma shows them to their dorms and they become excited to see the furnished rooms. After that, Carla gives Ryoma the summary for the day and he notes that they made even more than their first day. The managers suggest that Ryoma consider opening more branches in other towns but Ryoma thinks it's too early for expansion. They have a very busy day on day 3 as well and Ryoma helps around by making a pizza and other food for lunch for everyone. They close the day with 1.5 times the sales than the last day after working full time all day long. After closing, Ryoma considers hiring even more employees and a chef to help them around the shop. He goes to the merchant's guild and discusses the matter with the Glacella. She says that she will prepare the candidates soon and they call it a day. The next day, Ryoma visits the guild and ends up hiring all three new recruits. They introduce themselves as Fina, Maria, and Jane and they all come from the same village. Besides them, Ryoma also hires a cook by the name of Selma who used to work at an inn. Looking at this growth, Glacella also suggests that Ryoma opens a new branch but Ryoma stays firm on his decision that it is still too early. After that, they all go back to the shop and start working in fair shifts and just like that a whole week passes by since Ryoma opened his shop and they make a lot of profit. He notes that now he doesn't have to stay at the shop all the time and can now work on ranking up as an adventurer and producing more products to sell through Morgan Trading Company. One day, Serge asks Ryoma to come to his office to discuss a trading proposition. He says that currently Ryoma is providing them with a steady supply of iron ingots and sticky slime strings. In addition to these, he wants him to supply them with a huge number of waterproof cloth as well. He then explains that the season for the Grell Frog outbreak is coming soon and many adventurers go to the lake to hunt them for their hide and organs which are used in making armor and medicines. That's why waterproof garments and waders will be really popular and so he sees a great business opportunity in selling Ryoma's waterproof cloth. After that, Ryoma tries an experiment with a cleaner slime where he makes it eat a lot of pure iron in hopes of it evolving into a metal slime. He then heads to the mines alongside Elyria to work on mass producing the waterproof cloth with his green sticky slimes. Meanwhile, Elyria practices her violin so she can lure a limmer bird in the upcoming outbreak to tame it. While waiting for the cloth to finish curing, Ryoma makes clay dolls using his magic and handiwork and gives it to Elyria. After that, he makes a whole bunch of them for the whole Reinhardt family and gives it to them as well. Reinhardt suggests that Elyria takes them alongside her when she goes to the school and she requests Ryoma to make a doll of himself for her to take along as well. We all know what that means right. After that, he continues with his routine of making the waterproof cloth, training his slimes and checking in with the shop. His experimental slime also evolves into an iron slime and he notes that it must be because it ate only pure iron, and that's why it's different from the metal slime. One day, he notes all the employees gathered around a table and he asks them what was up. Carla reveals that they got some major contracts and now they are racking in a lot of profits. This is happy news for all of them and Ryoma thanks them all for their hard work. Just then, he realizes that he never gave them any holidays and thinks back on his past life. 
He apologizes to them and says that they will close the shop for a day every week and everyone will get scheduled holidays. Hearing this, all the employees become really happy and thanks Ryoma for his generosity and fair business practices. After taking care of that matter, Ryoma heads to the Adventurer's Guild to get some jobs to progress towards ranking up and the receptionist tells him that she got information about a party of adventurers by the name of Peer of Sikkim. She explains that they caught a rare breed of slime and were looking to sell it to the Tamer's Guild but the Guild refused to buy it off them. So if Ryoma is interested he can go see them and maybe see if it's a slime he's interested in. Being the slime geek he is, Ryoma immediately goes to meet the Peer of Sikkim and asks them about the slime. One of the drunk party members is feeling really down due to their bad luck and he starts lashing out at Ryoma saying if he's there to mock him, but his fellows quickly pick him up and take him away. After that, the party leader, Shin asks what business he has with them. Ryoma reveals that he is there to see the rare slime they caught and if it's something he doesn't own already he will buy it off them for a premium. Hearing this makes them all really happy and they show Ryoma the dark red fluid-like slime that they caught. Ryoma notices that it's a new species that he hasn't seen before and he buys it off them for two gold coins. They thank him for the purchase and tell him that they were feeling down as they came from another town with the slime hearing that if it's a rare breed it can fetch a good price. Ryoma then tips them with the information about the upcoming Grell Frog outbreak and says that if they register with the guild they can take part in the hunt and earn some fair gold. They all thank Ryoma once again and ask if they can help him in any way and he just asks them to pay his laundry shop a visit whenever they need some washing done. After that, Ryoma takes the slime to the mines and forms a contract with it. It turns out to be a bloody slime with the vampirism skill. It feeds on blood and can be really useful in clearing beast and monster corpses. He welcomes the slime and his family and then heads back to his shop. Meanwhile, the gods watch over Ryoma from their realm while sipping some boba tea and feel happy for him and his new life.